another Wednesday here on the Commander Support, which means yet another seven round Commander's Mock Draft right here on the channel. This time, I got multiple interesting trades for you guys to enjoy. So let's go down this uh, road here a little bit, man. Let's get into us. But before we get into it, make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already, because we're just getting started with all of the great Commander's Draft coverage for free right here on the Commander's Report. The latest Commander's Draft news, who they're going to be taking at number two, who they're targeting in round two, all that great stuff. In-depth scouting reports on all the top prospects that the Commander's are targeting. Also, we got weekly Commander's Mock Drafts just like this one. And oh yeah, guys, it's all 100% free. So if you love the Washington Commanders, there's no reason not to click that subscribe button and join us every single day to talk some Commanders football. All right, so now let's get into my first pick here. And this one's kind of chalk for me at this point in the process because I do think Jaden Daniels is the right fit for the Washington Commanders, for Cliff Kingsbury's offense uh, to be ready to go right away. I don't want Marcus Mariota starting games for this team heading into the 2024 season. So I really think that Jaden Daniels is the right fit for this team at number two. So we won't spend too much time on this. If you want to know my thoughts on Jaden Daniels, we actually put a video out yesterday where I went over my scouting report on Jaden Daniels. So I will put the link to that one in the comments and description of today's video. It will also be right above me if you want to check it out. So now, Let's make things interesting here with my first trade of this Commander's Mock Draft, where we're going to be trading back up into the first round here, pick number 16 to, uh, to be uh, precise here, and we're going to give up both of the Commander's second round draft picks, number 36 and number 40, to the Seattle Seahawks to move up to number 16 to take the next left tackle of the Washington Commanders to protect Jaden Daniels for the next decade. And that's going to be Troy Fontenot out of Washington. Absolutely fantastic player, man. Now, I mean, this guy gets dinged a little bit because he's not the biggest guy in the world in all these different things. But I think when you watch his film, he's super intelligent. He's, he's extremely, extremely technically refined. And I think he's ready to go day one. And when it comes to the Washington Commanders, I don't think that you can just wait around until round two to get your future left tackle, especially someone that you love at the position. This is something that you got to go out and get. You have to be aggressive because right now when you look at the offensive line situation, I mean, you're paying Andrew Wiley a lot of money this year, so you probably want to at least try him out at right tackle again. Maybe you move him over to left guard if you can get another tackle in this draft. But Cornelius Lucas, as much as I like him as a Swing tackle, I think he's really good in that role. He's not a starting left tackle in this league, and especially if you're going to be bringing in a brand new franchise quarterback, I think if you have the draft capital and the ammo to trade up for a guy like Troy Fotano, you absolutely do it. You look at my scouting report on Fontenot here, the pass protection is absolutely stellar. Hand placement is perfect. The balance is what you look for. Uh, he, he, he does a really good job at countering inside moves, which is something that a lot of these college tackles struggle struggle with coming out of college. He does it extremely well, and he's got over 34-inch arms. All right, so even though the size isn't fantastic from Fotano, it's not the same as like a Joe Alt or a, 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 a Talese Fuwanga from Oregon State. It's, he's not like a mauler type, but he's somebody that's going to absolutely protect the quarterback. He's pretty darn good as a run blocker as well, but in this pass-heavy offense with Cliff Kingsbury as the OC, Fontenot is going to be asked to be mostly a pass protector, which is his uh, which is his forte. I have him ranked as my number three offensive tackle in this year's class, and it is a loaded offensive tackle class. I have a top 15 grade on Fontenot right now, and if you have the opportunity to trade up at number 16 with a team like Seattle, a team that needs more help on the interior of the offensive line, might be looking to get an additional second round pick, in this case two, by trading down. I think they would absolutely take this deal. So let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Would you accept this trade if you were GM Adam Peters? Type A if you would accept it and move up to, to, to inside the top 20 once again, but give up both of your second round picks. Or type D for decline if you'd rather keep those two top picks at the top of round two. So now why not, man? Let's do another trade up because right now I'm sitting here and we don't have any second round picks, but we have three third round picks. And I'm going to use two of those third round picks to trade back in to round two to take a number one edge rusher for the future here. Here is the trade details. Okay, we're going to trade with the New York Giants. All right, before you say it's an in-division trade, Giants wouldn't do this on draft day. 
in-division teams trade all the time, all right? It's not that big of a deal. It's not like they're sending like a star player to the commanders, all right? So I think the in-division trade could actually happen. You give them your first two third round picks this year, number 67 and number 78, and you move up to number 47 overall in the second round. The Giants are a team with a lot of team needs right now, and they might be looking to add another pick here on day two. This, uh, this way, uh, everybody wins. Okay, so now, in round two, pick number 47, I'm going to have the Commanders take Chop Robinson, edge rusher out of Penn State. Now, is it possible that Chop is, is taken long before this pick? Absolutely. But is there also a chance that he falls down the board a little bit because of how bad he is as a run defender right now? I think absolutely there's a chance that he is here. And if it's not Chop Robinson, then you can get a guy like Jonah Ellis or somebody like a Darius Robinson if he's still here. There's going to be a good edge rusher available at number 47. In this mock, though, I'm going to say Chop Robinson falls because, let's face it, man, he is not a good run defender at this point in his uh, career journey. He's just not. He doesn't, uh, he's not very good at run diagnostics. He's not very good at knowing which gap he needs to fill. Uh, he's a decent tackler in open space, but right now the play strength is something that needs to be improved, all right? He's not somebody that's going to win with a ton of power in his game, and as a run defender, he gets blown off the spot extremely easily. So he's going to be coming into this situation here with Washington and Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. And he reminds me a little bit. I mean, it's not exactly one for one, but... But these Penn State linebackers, man, and these edge rushers, look at Micah Parsons because even though Parsons is way bigger in terms of power than Robinson... I think that these guys were both pretty darn raw coming out of college, but they are both extremely good athletes. Robinson is a special athlete when it ter in terms of his get-off, in terms of his speed, in terms of his bend around the edge. And I think right away, he provides value for the Washington Commanders, at least as a rotational edge rusher with the upside to be a dominant number one edge rusher in this league someday, which is something this team desperately needs at that position. All right, now, coming up, we're going to be getting into rounds three through seven of this week's seven-round Commander's Mock Draft. But before I get into that, no matter who the Commanders end up taking in the draft this year, they're going to be wearing this hat right here. This is the official 2024 Commander's Draft hat. It's a very historic year for the Washington Commanders. New GM, new head coach are going to be getting a brand new franchise quarterback. This is going to be a historic year for this football team. So if you want to kind of have a, have a piece of that, if you want to have a piece of that history, a part of you and part of your wardrobe forever, you can go to chatsports.com slash 24DH right now and get yourself an officially licensed Commander's Draft hat for the 2024 NFL Draft. I'm going to put the link to this in the comments and description today. So make sure you go check it out right now, chatsports.com slash 24DH to get an official Commander's Draft hat in your closet today. Here in round three, okay, it's our only round three pick after trading up back into round two. I'm going to take Jarvis Brownlee Jr., a corner out of Louisville. Had a really good senior bowl week. Uh, now, the top end speed isn't elite. He ran in the four fives, okay, but he's got super long arms, and he's very physical. And that's something that I think uh, Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. really look for in their respective DBs. Now, you have Emmanuel Forbes right now, who you're hoping develops into that true number one corner moving forward, but adding another physical, aggressive style cornerback to this room heading into camp, I think is something that this team definitely needs to do because I'm not sure Benjamin St. Juice is ever going to really kick it into that next, that next gear. Michael Davis is fine, but I'm not sure if he's going to be a long-term starter. Jarvis Brownlee here in round three, I think is somebody that could become that kind of guy because even though he's not the fastest guy in the world, I think he's got really good quick twitch ability. He's Sticks with guys in man coverage, which is what he'd be doing here in Washington. He's got long arms, and he matches that with a great mentality uh, to be physical throughout the route and in the run game as well. Really like Jarvis Brownlee Jr.'s fit here in Washington. I think there's a decent chance he could be a commander if it's towards the end of round three or even at the beginning of round four. Now we get into round five here, where I'm going to take tight end out of Penn State, our second Nittany Lion of this mock draft, Theo Johnson, who is currently my number three tight end on my big board. PFF is a little bit lower on him. So right now, he's, they're giving him to us at, in round five. I'm taking that every single day, okay? This guy is a really good receiver. He's a good blocker. Now, he might be the number two tight end right away behind Zach Ertz. Might need a little bit of development 
as he heads into the National Football League, but some of the biggest names at the tight end position in the National Football League were drafted on day three. I think Theo Johnson could absolutely, definitely has the pedigree to be that type of guy for the Washington Commanders here. Would also love to get Jatavian Sanders uh, at the top of round two if they, if they don't trade back up into the first. But man, if you can get a guy like Theo Johnson here in round five, I think that's one hell of a steal and probably would be my favorite pick of the draft, period. Then we get uh, also uh, here in round six, actually I think this is round five, 152, Zach Zinter, uh, offensive guard out of Michigan. And I've taken him, I think, in my last two Commander's mock drafts, and I just love the idea of bringing in Zinter as a long-term option at left guard, because we know that that's an issue. You know, you have Nick Allegretti in there right now, and Michael Dieter could potentially win the job, and who knows, you might even move Andrew Wiley in there if he can't handle himself uh, outside again this year. Uh, but Zinter is somebody that, you know, it's kind of like Andrew Voorhees last year, the center out of USC, where he's not going to be able to play at all in 2024, but he's something to look forward to in 2025. And with a team like Washington, that's not trying to eat the entire cake all at once. They're trying to rebuild a team and try to eventually get to the point where they have a really good and very solid foundation for the future. I think getting a guy like Zinter, who might might have been a second round pick this year if he didn't get hurt, uh, and very gruesomely hurt, I might add, he had a, he had a broken leg versus Ohio State this year. So that's obviously a concern. There's a reason why he's going in round six here. He's not going to be able to play this first year in the league, but I definitely think down the road, he's got the talent and he's got the ability to be a mainstay on this offensive line. And if you're getting that in round six, I think that's one hell of a pick. Then in round seven, this is one of my sleepers, guys. I really like Jalen Coker, wide receiver from Holy Cross. All right. I don't know how I got my hands on Holy Cross film, but I did this year, and I was going through all of like the lower-ranked wide receivers, and one after another, it's like, this guy stinks, this guy stinks, this guy's not getting drafted. Then all of a sudden, I come across Jalen Coker, who is 6'3", runs a really good 40 time, super explosive athlete, and he's actually pretty darn good as a route runner. And if you can get this guy in round seven, and that's where he's projected to go right now, he would provide some much-needed size to the Washington Commanders wide receiver core right now. Right now, Terry McLaurin, who's six foot, is your biggest starting wide receiver. Jalen Coker can come in right away. I think he can compete for a starting job, especially because Cliff Kingsbury likes to have four starting receivers on the field at one time. This guy would be your 6'3", bigger guy that I think could be a really, really good perimeter ball threat for this football team moving forward. You look at his relative athletic score this year, man. A 9.46, all right? So that's the 94th percentile. And this guy is expected to go in round seven. And when you look at the film, I do think he's a little bit raw. He needs a little bit of development. I mean, for God's sakes, he went to Holy Cross. I can't imagine the coaching there uh, is, is, is too high. But he definitely has the athletic profile that you look for, the, the athletic explosiveness to be a really, really good X receiver in the National Football League. Uh, and if you're getting him in round seven, this is definitely a dice roll I want to make if I'm the Washington Commanders. Now, here is my mock draft haul for this week. Let me know what you guys think about it down there in the comments section. Instead of Jonah Ellis, we have uh, Chop Robinson there in the third spot. So, uh, Jaden Daniels, we got Troy F Fontenot in the, in the first round. We trade back into round one to get our quarterback and left tackle of the future. Then we have Chop Robinson as our hopefully a future number one edge rusher. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. at the end of round three as hopefully a really nice physical contributor in the secondary. Theo Johnson as a number one tight end option for the future. Zach Sinter. Uh, somebody that won't be able to play this year, but could be a real big impact player on the interior of the offensive line starting in 2025. And then Jalen Coker, uh, one of my sleeper wide receivers this year that I think would be a steal in round seven. So grade this mock for me down there in the comments section, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you're feeling down there in the comments section. And that'll be it for today's show, guys. I really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now because we got even more Commander's Draft content coming your way just about every single day right here on the Commander's Report. So to never miss any of our videos, click that subscribe button right now.